Day one of the 2024 Hopkinton Annual Town Meeting was Monday, May 6th. To start the meeting, the consent agenda was set with a couple of articles being pulled out. Okay, so I have to also announce the home vote. So it is 39 no, 292 yes. The consent agenda carries. And so Article 7 set the fiscal year 2025 operating budget at $121,400,893. The town operating budget was approximately a 4.7% increase and passed with very little debate. The proposal before today's town meeting, if approved, will deliver a balanced budget one that sustains fiscal year 2024 level services across departments, that pays for contractual and other inflationary cost increases, and includes capital spending to renew town facilities and equipment, that provides for schools to deal with growing enrollment. I mentioned that this budget proposal contains some targeted service level increases. Specifically, the proposed budget provides the Hopkins Public Schools with a $3.2 million funding increase not including substantial increase in school and town staff benefits costs. Um, we are first ranked best teachers in Massachusetts, no surprise, best places to teach in Massachusetts, and number one best school district in Massachusetts. So thank you. The 24 operating budget was 59937000 The FY25 salary increase is 2.2 million, or 3.77%. The expense increase at 947000 or 1.58 percent for a total increase of $3.2 million or a $63,144,000 budget, an increase of 5.35 percent. The yes is 280, the no is 70, so with a simple majority, the budget passes. Article 9, which was for the approval to fund PEG access, got HCAM some very kind feedback. Essentially, as part of cable TV licensing agreements, the town has negotiated with cable TV service providers to pay state-authorized public access surcharges to the town to support PEG access. Under a provision previ previously passed by town meeting, these fees flow into public, public educational and government access fund, PEG, revolving account. So this year, the article would transfer $285,438 accumulated in that revolving account and $70,000 from free cash to provide it to HCAM to support community programming. To be clear, HCAM is an independent, not-for-profit organization, not a part of town government. An amendment to the article added $50,000 to HCAM's funding. I would like to amend this motion to increase the funding by $50,000 which will come from certified free cash. We have about $5.7 million of it, so we should be able to afford that. The funding will be used for staff and equipment, both of which are needed. Anyone in here ever watch HCAM? There's 73 people watching this meeting right now. And as you'll see in the budget, most of their funding comes from agreements with Comcast and Verizon, but some of it comes from certified free cash. In 2023, 2.3 million Americans cut the cord. And in 2024, the number of people who stream their television will outnumber those that have cable. And that threatens HCAM's existence. HCAM provides essential coverage of government and school functions, and in many cases, it's the only way senior citizens, some of whom cannot make it to meetings, get access to their government. This is a critical community resource. It enables transparency and accountability and highlights the best our students and our student athletes have to offer. I formally move to amend the motion to increase the proposed funding by $50,000 to be transferred from certified free cash. Okay, so it's 235 to 70. We had the, a yes at home, so that's going to be 236 to 70 on the motion as amended. The amended article passed, and we are very thankful and grateful for the community support. Article 17 seeked approval of a little over $667,000 for the digitalization of Old Town Records. Our recent successful digitization of over 100,000 pages for the health department demonstrates our capability to scale this effort. Digitization also protects our records from environmental risks like fire and flood, 
and improves findability with added metadata. The article passed the required two-third majority, 297 to 46. Article 19 was for approval of an addition to Hopkins Elementary and for some renovation projects to upgrade Hopkinton's schools. The total cost of the projects is $48,550,000. Currently, we're at 689 students. So fast forward to 802 students, and you can take a look at what has changed in terms of color in that diagram. The gymnasium has gone to red, the cafeteria has gone to red, the server remains red, the library is red. And so on that first slide where I was talking about how we can absorb kids and increase class size to 22, 23, 24, there gets to be a time at which those big common spaces like libraries and cafeterias and gymnasium can no longer sustain. And that's where we're going to be in several years when we get to that 800 student mark. Hence this project. This is a long-term planning project. Discussion took place as to if the Hopkins Elementary Edition was necessary and needed at this time. In fact, not a single K-5 through grade met the MSBA projection this year, and the current kindergarten class is even smaller this year than the K class last year. So are we still using the numbers when considering such an expensive renovation? I don't doubt that more space may be necessary, however, based on the actual K-5 through enrollment numbers, significantly lagging MSBA projections, it seems that perhaps a prudent approach might be to wait a year or two and see what percent of this projected growth will materialize given the decrease in building in town. When I was in the building department a year ago, we had a young couple come on Hayden Rose Street, bought a house for $400,000, worked on it for six months, and it just got sold for $1.6 million, right straight across the street from the high school. So the fact remains that people want to be here. and and. You know, we just have to deal with that. The school department has done a great job. The, the school committee has done a great job. And I just wish we built Hopkins bigger 25 years ago. But we, we had no idea. So I stand in support of the school committee's article. And I hope the rest of you do as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Cross-reference the Wagman report with, bureau, uh, with data from Vital Statistics and also DESI. The enrollment metrics show that Wagman's forecast actually did not anticipate the COVID-19 boom that Hopkinton residents experienced. So to put that in context, uh, his report said there would only be 144 births in Hopkinton in 2021. The actual number was 185. So you all had 40 more kids than you should have had. Okay. And, and what happens is you, you start to look down at the cascading effect of that and essentially he misses in lots of places and underestimates in lots of other places. For example, the COVID birth rate increased in Hopkinton, which defied the state trend. Wagman underestimated 2021 Hopkinton births by 22%. After a convincing, well thought out presentation by Hopkinton Public Schools and the school committee, the article passed the required two third majority, 242 to 101. Article 20 seeked approval for $500,000 for Ash Street and Fenton Street drainage improvement. This is a department that is doing a lot with the money for the town and they're doing a lot prospectively, but there is a lot of work to be done. I chair that committee and my road hasn't been paved either, so no, it's a struggle. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it is not a mystical process. We really do have meetings about this. We go through these line items. We have the very discussion you were asking about in terms of how is this paid for? Why this one and why not that one? We would love to have you as part of that conversation too. The article passed 209 to 46. Article 21 seek $780,000 for roadway and sidewalk improvements to the Carlo Road, Peppercorn Road, and Barbara Road. In the special election, we're gonna be uh, reallocating unspent sidewalk budget. Why wouldn't we use it for this project to reduce our tax burden? The one you're referring to in special town meeting was from a previous project and it's being reallocated uh, to Article 1 in the special town meeting. So this is the method that was chosen to fund this particular article with a debt exclusion. The article failed the required two-third majority with 151 for and 81 against. Day one of annual town meeting closed out with article 22. 
which seeks $850,000 for culvert replacement on Granite Street. Those are the potential options, so they are open bottom. Um, and this was funded through a grant from FEMA, um, Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities. Um, there's potential to get more grant funding, but as anybody that knows that's driven around, this road probably floods over tops about three times, four times a year. At least seen it at least twice so far this year. Um, we don't like to drive through flooded roads. Um, and it also is the headwaters of the Charles River, so we have some ecological value and some requirements that we have from the federal government to check that river. The article passed the required two-third majority, 183 to 41.